Oh, the full release of FM24 is finally here. And what a way to celebrate them with the first ever full length series on this channel, Bottoms Up. It's a journeyman save where we start from the bottom and we work our way up. <music> So the way this is going to work, folks, is we are going to let the random number generator decide which league out of the National League North or South that we start in. And then the random number generator will decide which team in that league that we start with. I'm going to hand you over to past me that done this a couple of days ago, just so I could get a little bit of prep in place for who I'm going to be managing. And I think you're going to like it. <music> Okay, so here we are with our teams and our leagues loaded in, on an Excel spreadsheet with Vanarama National League North here and South there. On this side of the screen, we have our random number generator. At the moment, it's minimum and maximum is 1 to 10, but I will change that 10 to a 2. And I will hit generate. If it loads number 1, that will be the Vanarama National League North. And if it loads number two, that will be the Vanarama National League South. Let's go. Number two. So we will be managing in the Vanarama National League South. We will add a four to that. Whichever number it chooses from here, the listed in alphabetical order, is the team I will be managing in bottoms up on FM24. Let's see who it gives us. Number one, Avely. Okay, well, I don't know anything about Averley, but it's probably time we head back to the game where we can see who Averley are, how good they are, or maybe how bad they are, to see whether this is going to be a long, long series or not. I'll see you after this transition. Okay, so here we are, folks. We are managing Avely in the first episode of Bottoms Up here on the channel. And as you can see, it's confirming it there. Breaking news, Avely, higher heels. Before we go any further, please leave a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on if you want to see more of this series. All of that massively helps, and I'd really, really appreciate it. But let's carry on. Avely have today confirmed the appointment of Damien Hills as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football. Again, I go back to what I said when we became Luton manager. I don't think eyebrows are being raised. At the appointment of the inexperienced 44-year-old, and he is sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at Parkside. He replaced his previous manager, Danny Scopes. Now, to be clear, in terms of Danny Scopes, the narrative for this series is that he's got the club promoted from the Isthmian Premier League into the Vanarama National League South, but he didn't feel he could take him on any further. So he stepped aside and he fully supports the club's decision to employ me as the new manager. So let's get into the next part of it. Craig Johnson, our managing director, I would like to extend the warmest congratulations on behalf of everyone at the club and welcome you to Avery. Well, thank you very much, Craig. We'll discuss the club's vision and objectives shortly, but first and foremost, please take some time to read the club's welcome pack. This is a momentous day and truly a sign of great things to come. They know I'm going on to great things. That's why it's such a momentous day. So their reputation is one star. Their media prediction is 22nd. Now, the last time I looked, which was before the last match day, Avery were actually second in real life in the Vanarama National League South. So they're massively overperforming, doing really well. The director of football position is vacant. We need to get on that pretty quickly. The assistant manager is Lionel Ainsworth. They were founded in 1927. Avery booked their place in the Vanarama South by winning promotion from the Isthmian Premier League last season. So the FA Cup we enter at the second qualifying round and the FA Trophy we enter at the second round. Finances are okay. There's no transfer budget and £5,937 in the um, wage budget. As a club which enjoyed its best spell of success during the 2010s and their last competition win coming as recently as 2022, the Millers are a club with a growing history. Avery won the English eighth tier in 2009 and 2022 and were runners-up two times. So 
we could potentially do a lot of good things with this club. No fierce rivals by the looks of it. Okay, be interested to see if we build up fierce rivals. Will we be at Avery long enough to build up fierce rivals? We're getting to all of the nitty gritty about moving between clubs and all that sort of stuff as the series goes on. It'll be in the first few episodes. So they're recommending a 4-4-2. We've got Billy Gannon out on loan to Stansted. Doesn't seem to want to... Oh, there you go. There's his profile. So, okay, he's an attacking midfielder. Not really going to be playing with an attacking midfielder. A hot prospect is Tommy Davis. Presume that's him. Key player is Matt Rush. That's our striker. We're fairly loyal as a squad personality. And our top earner is Garrett Kelly, who, surprisingly, because he's their top earner, is not even in the 4-4-2 formation they've given us. Okay. So, the club vision. Strive to make progress on and off the pitch. Work within the wage budget. Fair enough. Grow the club's reputation. Shouldn't be difficult. The five-year plan. End of the current season. Avoid relegation for the Van Vanarama South. We have to avoid relegation because if we don't, we get sacked anyway because we can't go any lower than the division we're in. Be competitive in the FA Cup. Be competitive in the FA Trophy. And then my contract expires. I'm on a one-year contract by the looks of it. And then it's continue to avoid relegation. Continue to avoid relegation. So basically just for the next five years, if we're here, as long as we don't get relegated, we're fine. And obviously work within the wage budget. The supporters' culture strive to make progress on and off the pitch, remain in the Van Arama South. So, in terms of supporters and board, it's basically just don't get relegated. So, we'll do no... Oh, no, we do have the press conference. Don't want the interest squad friendly, and I'll have that every month. That's how I always do it. I wish they'd just automatically save. Okay, so here we are then at the inbox. So that's just telling us we take charge. The supporter profile, moderate influence on the board, 880 followers on social media, 250 season ticket holders, no one on the waiting list. They have 34% core uh, support profile with 21% family, 17% casual, 13% fair weather and hardcore, 2% corporate. I mean, already that's more than what Luton Town had because they had zero corporate. So Avery are doing well in that respect. Club vision expectations. Yes, we will accept that. Players in the last year of the contract is pretty much going to be everybody. I mean, you can see there, Matt Rush definitely is a best player, four-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential. We'll have a look at the squad shortly. We've got a Tommy Davis, they said, is a, a young talent. He's two and a half star current with five star potential. Tactical direction required. We'll do the tactics later on. Pre-season preparation and Avery's injury update. We've got nobody injured. So if we look at the finances, so no transfer budget. We've got about, well, we've got exactly £400 in, in the wage budget to spend. Because this is, we're playing this in the original mode. So all their transfers have already been done, which basically means that the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to look at where we're weak in the squad, bringing players in for it. I'm probably going to be bringing in players on non-contracts and things like that at this level. So try not to get too attached to people because they're probably going to be leaving fairly soon. If someone does well, they'll probably go. So that's the finances. I'll show you my profile just so you can see what I've set myself up as. National C licence, we're a Sunday league footballer and these are our attributes. We've basically just ticked the box where it says to assign attributes based on the club, which is obviously is Averley. So as you see, we've pretty much got nothing. I mean, four for people management and motivation, six for mentals. This was the default. I didn't change any of it. Our contract, if we have a look at that, we want a part-time contract, £350 a week, £325 after tax. If we avoid relegation for the Van Amarma National League South, we get a bonus of £800. Wow. So, that's finance. Let's have a look at the staff. 
So we have no director of football. We have no chief scout. We have no scout. So we need to get these advertised pretty quickly. I will be taking the staff from the adverts. I won't be going into the staff search screen. I don't have anything about going in there. I may well go in at some point during the save. I'm just not going to do it from the start. We have an assistant manager, so we need a head of youth development. Let's click for him. We have two coaches who, I mean, our coaching is pretty poor, let's be honest. If we go into the competitions and into here, season preview, yeah, we're, they're now saying 23rd. So it was 22nd, we're now 23rd. We're 50 to one to win the title. Um, apparently we're nowhere near as bad as Dover, so that's, that's a good thing. If we have a look here at the Media Dream 11, so we've got Joe Day, who is the number one. So he looks a pretty handy goalkeeper at this level. Bone, Sam Bone, 24-year-old fullback. So, he, I mean, he is very good, isn't he? He plays for Maidstone and he's on £600 a week. I've got to think that's going to be way above what we can offer for people. He apparently played at for Charlton Athletic Bone. Let's have a look at, say, Woods. We're just randomly kick, clicking names here. He's on £750 a week, a 19-year-old. Five stars, wow. For Dartford. And then Vega, Billy Vega. I've heard of him, I'm sure I have. Yeah, he's on loan from Arsenal. There you go, that's why I've heard of him. He's um, So I support Arsenal in real life. Please don't hate me for it. I wonder why I've heard of him. Yeah, that's the reason why, because he's part of the Arsenal youth team. So he's five stars for this level as well. And he's currently at Eastbourne Borough. So we've got nobody in this list by the looks of it. If we have a look at the club info screen, we play at Parkside. We have a 3,500 capacity stadium, I think it is. These are our board members. So our captain is Harry Gibbs. Our vice captain is Jonathan North. He's 32. Key player is Matt Rush and hot prospect Tommy Davis, which we pretty much knew all of that. So looking at our fixtures, we have Cambridge City, Carshalton, Dulwich Hamlet and Lewes in friendlies. And then we come up against Chippenham, Taunton, Eastbourne Borough, Worthing and Dartford. So in terms of Chippenham and Taunton, what well we got there, Chippenham, Taunton, Eastbourne Borough. Let's have a look at the at the season preview. Chippenham, Taunton, Eastbourne. So Chippenham was their first one, isn't it? Okay, so that we could be getting off to a winning start. Taunton as well. Where's Eastbourne Borough? And Eastbourne Borough up there. So it gets hard with it. We've got Dartford in there as well. So the fact we've got, if we go into the schedule, the fact we start off with Chippenham and Taunton, they will be the first two games of the next episode. That's actually quite a generous start for us. So we need to be hitting the ground running with them games there. I'll probably arrange a couple more friendlies. I'm not the type of person that does friendlies against Manchester City and Bayern Munich and things like that because it brings in a whole load of money. Because at the end of the day, all it's going to do is make our morale absolutely rock bottom. So... Looking at dynamics, team cohesion is very poor, you expect that. Club atmosphere is good and the managerial support is average. If we go into our tactics now, I am going to be looking at doing wing play and the 4-4-2. I might play about with some of the roles, but basically at this level, I think you just need to be keeping it as basic as possible. I'll have a look at, with, tell them to do quick pick for us. They've not picked, we don't have a reserve goalkeeper, folks. Well, no wonder he's their best goalkeeper then if we haven't got a reserve. He's three stars, 32 years old. Okay, so this is our best team according to Quick Pick. Rush, he likes to be a pressing forward, advanced forward. He can do a deep line forward, but he seems to prefer the advanced forward role. So if we move him over there and see what Ogun Rindy can do. I mean, he's not even a striker. Okay, so already it looks like we're going to need strikers to be able to do a 4-4-2. 
So Charlie Hughes is a striker. Well, apparently he's a striker. Um, target forward, pressing forward. So what we could do is we could have that going on. And Charlie Hughes, six foot three, so he's certainly got the ability for that. He's not got a left foot and he's very strong in his right foot. Certainly been a journeyman. He's a leading player for most regional Premier Division sides. So that's that's basically us or maybe the league below. So yeah, we're gonna let's have a look at the actual squad. Let's filter it by position. So goalkeeper, yeah, all we've got is that. That's not good at all. Um, Tommy Davis, let's have a look at our defenders. Oh, he's six foot four. He doesn't have a head by the looks of it because he can't head a ball. And he's got a weak left foot, so we need to make sure he's on the right-hand side all the time. Jaden Randell is our right-back. He's two-and-a-half star current, four-star potential. Hmm. I'm not being overly filled with confidence here, folks. Looking at this team, I'll say Avery certainly, ha certainly are overperforming. So that's one of our centre-backs who, Jalen Jones, again, doesn't have a left foot. Harry Gibbs, he has a reasonable left foot, six foot two, so he's relatively tall enough. So that would definitely have to be changed anyway. Then Jason Ring, he can play left and right, so he could be a useful substitute, given the fact that he can run a little bit. He can do a bit of crossing. And apparently, he's transfer listed. So, let's come in here. Oh. Go away. Right, let's come into here. So, is he listed by request? So, why can't I? Oh, here we go. So let's confirm that. We don't want anyone transfer list. I mean, I may well re-transfer list him. Tom Stevens, left centre-back. I mean, he's five foot eight, so he's never playing as a left centre-back for me. I don't care how strong his left foot is. He, mm, I mean, he's with us for £200 a week for the season. He's someone we could potentially use as a substitute. Mm. I'm, I'm not keen. He's someone I might look at getting, at getting shot off, to be honest. If he, it's not his first season here or something silly like that. Jonathan Nzengo can play. He, he's natural on the left. He's competent on the right, but he does prefer to be out on the left-hand side. He can be a winger. I'm not having a defensive winger. That's disgusting. So that was Nzengo. Then we've got Edwina Vass. We know Vass. He's a left back. Yeah, don't have an issue with that. He seems a good player. Three and a half star current potential, five star. And he's only 20 years old. Garrett Kelly, 27 years old. He's on 400 pounds a week. He's one of our higher earners. He can play in there or in there. He can do the ball winning midfielder role. Probably want to keep him away from box to box if possible, but he can do the ball winning. Okay, so I think looking at our squad, so Matt Rush is definitely one of our strikers. Charlie Hughes also has to be a striker. Like I say, this guy can be a striker, but he's actually, he's 24 years old. He's not likely to get much better, but he can play as a winger on both sides and that could be very useful. Okay, it's if we go into the squad planner, we definitely need a goalkeeper. In terms of the left hand side, and Zengo is a we're looking at playing him there, so we'll probably take him out of there. Jason Ring can play there. Tom Stevens, oh that's the guy that's five foot eight and will never be a centre back. 
So yeah, that's probably what we're looking at. So probably looking at getting rid of him. On the right hand side, again in Zengo, he can play there. Apparently he's natural over there where he's only accomplished on the left. I suppose we could leave him in there. I don't know if I'd want him to be our first choice, if that's the best we've got to offer. Jason Ring does prefer the right, and Jaden Randell is purely a right-hand side. I mean, he works hard and he's determined, so that's a bonus. He don't mind being a wing-back, so I think we can probably move... At the moment, I'm looking at... I probably might have him... He's not likely to be... Joe, I think I'm actually going to take him out of there. We know he can do it, but we're going to take him out anyway. That's... We need better. That one we can... He, he's brilliant. He, he looks fantastic. I'm happy with that. And I'm happy with Jason to be able to support. But I think we need better on the right. In the middle... I mean... He's not going to be there so let's get rid of him Tommy Davis I think we need to put him or oh, actually for the left hand side he probably is down here so Harry Gibb he's the one that's going to be playing on the left hand side of the two isn't he so Jalen Jones who's two and a half star three star oh he's six foot six oh my word Guyanese six foot six Holy smoke, he's tall. So then over here again, we're removing because I don't want him as part of my squad. So basically, we've got three. So we need another, at least another one centre back. I'd probably want to get another two centre backs in. Then on the left hand side, we've got Benton, we've got Nzengo, Og Ogunrindi, and who is this one? Nana Kai. I mean, he, he's a bit of a handyman in the fact that he can play in numerous positions. He's three stars, four star potential. I'd probably be looking at playing him in the centre more than I would out wide. He's a wide target forward. Or he can be a winger, or he can do the same on both sides. Okay, he seems useful and he's got potential, so might be worth keeping him around. If we look at the right-hand side... Michael Dada. Again, he seems more of a central player. But he's a three-star winger out on the right, so he could be quite useful. Sidju Odalusi. He can be a winger, wide midfielder. Decent Vanarama self player. Lionel Ainsworth, he's their assistant manager. And he's 35 years old. He can be a winger. I mean, yeah, he, he can cross a ball, which is better than what some of the others can do, to be fair. In the middle, he likes to be more of a forward-thinking player. But he has got 10 for long shots, which kind of opens him up to the box-to-box -box midfield role. And he can use both feet. He's actually quite useful. OK, so I think central midfield, we're fine. we we could probably do with better. Garrett Kelly, he's their top earner, this guy, I think. I think that's the one that saw was top earner. So that's saying he's four stars. Okay, so I don't think we've got a bad squad, but we definitely need a backup goalkeeper. We need... I'm not too concerned about left back because we've got Edwino Vaz. So pretend if that will be a luxury one. If we've got money left over, then we'll get them. Although Edwino Vaz is on a non-contract, so he could leave at any minute. We so we need a goalkeeper. We need a right-sided, like a right wing back. We need one or two central defenders. We could probably do with a left-sided winger. I think we're fine on the right. If we can replace any of these with better, then we can, then we will. But I don't think it's urgent. 
and we need we need strikers because who's this one? A Alex Hernandez. I mean, he's got pretty good finishing. I think we probably bring him through. Actually, he's in the under twenty one. So let's move him to the senior squad. Why is he unavailable? Player has been made unavailable for A the under twenty ones. Well, yeah, because he's with the senior squad now. With him, yeah, he can play up there. I'm not looking at playing him there. Hughes, yeah, we know Hughes and Rush. Okay, so, as it is at the moment, that's what our squad looks like. In terms of, where's, this, where's the button I wanted to press? There you go. So, yeah, looking at it from this perspective, goalkeeper... Right wing back, a striker, a left winger, and then it's luxuries after that. The problem we're going to have, if we look at our squad in terms of wage, so the highest wage is there, we can't afford, we've only got 300, I think it was, in the wage budget, 400 in the wage budget. So in theory, all we can afford if we're doing contracts, is two players around this level. So we're really going to need to look at the free contract players, who we can bring in on non-contracts and things like that. Maybe if we get them on a part-time contract for £50 a week or whatever, with an appearance bonus. So that's what I'm going to do, folks. In between this episode and the next one, I am going to be looking for, for these players, playing the friendlies, trying to get the star situation sorted out, all that sort of amazing stuff. And I will see you back here tomorrow at 6pm for episode two. Every episode will be coming out Monday to Friday, 6pm in the evening. That's UK time. And there may be the occasional upload on a weekend, but only on a very, very special occasion. So thank you very much for watching, folks. Please leave a like, please subscribe. Should have turned my lights on and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye.